been a day or two. We arrived and uh, cleaved, that's right. Uh, beautiful little town, I'll show you a little bit more about it, but uh, we've just had a few bit of clean up and things to do. Um, and now we're going to walk about just out of the town uh, outskirts here, along a um, bit of the farms. Bumped into number one here. His name is Clyde. Clyde the Clyde's Dale. Now this, this bloke was uh, put together by a farmer. He's called Turtle on here, but I think it was Peter Crosby. He's a farmer and um, back behind Clyde here is a shovel. That apparently uh, his uh, grandparents used to have to do the land around here and he wanted to showcase it. And one windy day where he couldn't get out of the paddock, he uh, put his tools together and he welded some of his tools in this thing. So uh, I'll give you a quick look at it. So here we go. This is Clyde. And as you can see, an absolute genius, this bloke, put this together. It looks spectacular. He burnt through 17 kilos of mic wire doing it all and uh, a lot of hammering and bending to get the shapes. So this is Clyde and he's got a little mate down there, he's called Fluffy. Right, made it into town from uh, our little jaunt out to Clyde. Say g'day to Clyde the Clyde Sale. We're in uh, in the town area. There's about 1,700 people in Cleve, and uh, it's a lovely little town. The amount of waves that you get from people driving by, um, you go into the stores, and everybody is very um, cheerful and chatty. It's amazing. A couple of good. Um, uh, what do you call them, restaurants or bakeries, uh, there's a nice pie shop. Um, there's also uh, down in the middle of the street there too, you can grab your, um, your pie or whatever and you can go across the street there and uh, be in the little gazebo there and, and munch on it, it's nice. Um, lots of um, history around the town too, you can walk the trail around town and, and there's so many little, um, little signs out the front of the shops that saying the history of them owned by such and such and ran for so long. I think this place across the road was actually one of the first houses in Cleve and uh, it, w it was um, slightly demolished and then it was rebuilt again. Um, and there was another interesting one you can't see from here. Um, it was the bank and then in behind the bank there was the residence for the bank manager. Pretty good. Right, we saved this one for you. This is Clyde's mate. It's called Bonnie. <laughs> so how good's that? So this is Bonnie. It is an absolute amazing bit of work from was it Peter Crosby I think it was, wasn't it? So there's um there's discs, ploughing discs in here. There's um, like shears and uh, pliers and spanners. Oh, you can't forget good old fashioned horseshoe in there too. Um, I think there was a, is it a clutch plate or something in here? Um, oh, there's definitely a clutch plate there, that's, that's a clutch plate in it. Um, oh, more shears, and of course chains, chains galore. So I'll swing around this side, yeah, more of the, the discs, pliers, wrenches, and uh, he's pulling an old plough. earlier, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, um, Cleve being a, obviously the agriculture and livestock sort of side of things, so uh, it's not out of the ordinary to find a, what used to be the old ironmonger and uh, harness store. It's now been turned into a, uh, a boutique uh, accommodation. Right, another thing, well this is the last sculpture I've got to show you. This one here is Reggie the Wedgie. Look at that. Isn't Reggie beautiful? Now for you that don't know, Wedgie is referring to a wedge-tailed eagle, which is uh, one of our biggest, um, well, it's a f biggest bird of prey um, in Australia. 
and uh, this is done by the sculptor again that did the horses, I believe uh, Peter Crosby was it, and he's used nearly every tool left in his toolbox for this one. I'm pretty sure you blokes, if you want a 10 mil, it'll be in here. But uh, yeah, he's using the, the shears, there's, there's a lot more tools in this one, a lot more um, crescents and spanners, uh, what else can I see in there, pliers, thin snips, yeah, but it is gorgeous. Promised. Here's this little uh, RV site. It's just uh, through Cleves as you go uh, through town. Fantastic wide open space, nice flat sites. There's probably about 10 powered with water and another two without water that got power. I think it was $10 unpowered and an extra $5 for a powered site. Beautiful trees around, nice bit of grass on a couple of sites there, which are great. Awesome kitchen facilities out the back there. The toilets and the showers are in uh, construction at the moment, so uh, just be aware of that. There's a dump, dump site close to um, the park here as well, just over here on my right hand side. And as you can see out the back there, there's a nice little open area ground there where you can kick a footy around or fly a kite or something. So highly recommended to come here and stay in Cleve and enjoy the Cleve hospitality. It's awesome. Spot you down the road. Well, we're all saddled up, ready to go. I was just leaving through Cleve, couldn't resist stopping at this awesome little playground. I guess there's, yeah, look at that little bike, bike track back here, a little skate bowl in here. But the thing that caught my attention was the theme. That, believe it or not, that's the theme of the silo, which uh, obviously is pretty big around here. There's a factory down here that makes silos, and uh, there's, there's 50, or 50 or 60 of them all in the, in the paddock, brand new, ready to be shipped out to the farmers. For all their uh, their grain and things, but uh, yeah, it's just quite neat to see that the uh, the park here for the kids was all also themed. Beautiful green grass around, so uh, top effort there, Cleef. Really nice. The toilets, the facilities, the RV parks, um, even even to park your caravan in town. Um, a lot of attention to detail to the uh, to the traveller. So uh, if you are travelling and you want uh, a neat little town to haul up into for a day or two, this is the one. Anyway, let's go and get some salt here again. That way. Well, that was a huge drive. All of about 30 kilometers of it. <laughs> but it was a nice drive from the, uh, the hills of uh, Cleve to the coast of Arno Bay. And uh, wow, it's not bad. Got a little bit of a cloudy day behind us, a little bit windy in places as well, but uh, there we have, nice little marina there, boat coming back from his fishing trip. Seen a lot of uh, little batches, of little cribs along here, so obviously a great little uh, holiday place. Oh, it's going to be absolutely awesome in the summertime. But uh, beautiful little bay, and we're down the far, we're, we're going to be down the far end there where the uh, uh, probably where the jetty is. I think that's where we're going to be parked up down there. That's where the uh, the RV behind the pub is going to be. Going to do one or two days here. But, uh, beautiful spot. Right, just made it down the way from where we were parked. We're down at um, I don't know, Bay Tavern. And uh, just walk down to this little, it's called Salt Water Creek, I think. And it is pretty. It's nice and clear. And uh, there's quite some tidal current coming in right now. And we're on a boardwalk. So uh, that's only a quick little 700 meters from here to the mouth of the Salt Water Creek. So uh, toodle along. It's beautiful. The bathroom facilities down there, man, some of the best uh, portaloos I've ever seen, man, they're really good. And uh, the boardwalk 
nicely easily accessible nice and wide you get a wheelchair down through here with no problems uh, just a shame about a bit overcast a little bit windy a little cool but uh, other than that it's a lovely little experience to come along stretch the legs and check out the bird life and things so we'll uh, catch up the other end Good morning. We stayed, you can just see the tavern there, just the other side of the tavern. There's a nice little spot there. We ate at the tavern, we had a beautiful squid schnitzel. Man, that was really good. Um, and then across the road, if you fancy a change of um, venue, there's a nice little uh, place we can have lunches and things. Um, they do an Arno burger, which is a bit of a challenge, I believe. There's also a nice caravan park um, across the road from the, the pub as well, if you want power and water. So, I'm standing outside this um, this grain shed, which was built back in 1912, and it um, housed the grain, which uh, went out for export, I suppose, up until 1964. Anyway, some history on um, Arno Bay. Prior to this all being built, there was settlers that um, worked the land, the pastoralists. And they did uh, wool and grains and bits and pieces. And between 1963 and 1863, I should say, they needed to get the produce to market. And what would happen is that this is one here called Postball, a postboy, which was, sadly was a ship that was lost. Um, it got beached here and uh, she was a goner. But what would happen is that the ship would pull up into the bay and they would row onto shore, light a fire, and then the fire would then be seen up, uh, up on another hill, which another fire was done, and that would signal to all the farmers that there was a boat in the bay and they needed to get their weirs down to here. And they then rowed those weirs to the boat to market, which was quite a time-consuming job. And it was getting popular, so they built a jetty. So the jetty was built in 1880. And uh, later on, well, actually a year later or two, they built this nice little signal light to signal them into the jetty. So now, the ships would have a place to pull up. And then, of course, the shed was used as a store. In 1882, the town, which was called, up until then, what was it Saltwater Creek? I think they called it um, because that was where they bought their produce down the Saltwater Creek when it was dry. That was basically the road to the to the bay. 
Um, but in 1882 it was called Bly, um, from the Captain William Bly, and it stayed that way until about 1940, and in 1940 it got changed to Arno Bay. There's three descriptions of why it was changed, well, how, why it came to Arno Bay. The first one, um, they say it was after an Italian river, the Arno River, I believe. And the other one was the Aboriginal history, um, the Saltwater Creek or Salt Creek. Um, they called that Arno, I guess, something like that. Don't quote me on that one. Um, but, yeah, don't quote me on this one either, but this is a fun one. Matthew Flinders, when he sailed the Spencer Gulf, the young fellow that was up in the crow's nest said, land ahoy. And they kind of looked out and go, ah, no bay. Ah, no bay. <laughs> so work with it what you want. Anyway, um, 1940 when it got changed in Arno Bay was also a record time where the harvest of grain was um, 11,000 tonnes. So this place was really pumping with the grain. So um, it wasn't until about 1963 that they changed from the storage shed here to some silos. So the silos are just out here on the main road and that basically meant an end to the jetty. There's a silo down over there. And everything was done by road. So since 1963, the harbour side of Arno Bay slowed down a lot and it's become a fishing place and a tourist place. Um, in 1997, a bloke by the name of Hagen Steyr, I think it is, and a bunch of fishermen got together and said, let's utilise the beautiful pristine waters that we've got out there in Arno Bay and we'll start a fish farm. So they started rearing um, bluefin tuna, yellowtail kingfish, and mulloway. And so now you've got, um, I think we call it aquaculture these days. And I think I pointed it out there before, but somewhere out there is, looks like a few little islands, and that there is the fish farms out there, which is a, a major part of export from Arno Bay now. So there we have it. I hope I haven't bored you. Sorry, you can wake up now. So we'll go and have a look out on the jetty and uh, try our luck at probably some fishing later on out there. I'll just go for a walk and show you the jetty. So here we go. The beautiful um, Arno Bay and the jetty. that uh, could really tell quite a few stories about what happened around here with the export. Well, obviously things came to this jetty as far as supplies and fertilizers to help work the land and uh, probably food and all that sort of stuff as well. And in return, those boats sailed out of here with the produce that came from the land. So, uh, oh, really pretty out here and try a bit of fishing. Gave it a go last night but we we're unsuccessful and of course the uh, the wind was pretty wicked. Right now it's pretty nice. You've been down this road for far too long He left your love behind But still you keep on crawling back Despite the pain inside Cause all that I want is for you to be happy Give me a chance to show that you can be Well open your eyes and you'll see the way I see Cause all that
and we've met Clive. Or well, is it Clyde? Clyde. Morning, Clyde. Clive. No. Yeah. What an amazing boardwalk. One of the. She's a pain in the butt. God, yo, buddy. Yobos, crikey. There was some settlements um, and pastorals that were working, um, creating the uh, the. I'm not doing a very good job. 